My name is Jerry Satran. I am a qualified accountant in Wollongong, but my other job, voluntary work, is uh, I'm acting as the president of the Vietnamese community in Wollongong, in the Illawarra. In Vietnam, there's not such a retirement village or a retirement apartment in Vietnam, but I guess our culture is always look after our elders because we believe that they raised in you, they brought you up to life, and it's, it's important, it's your duty to look after your parents or your elders or grandparents when they get old. As a matter of fact, we live with our parents, like my parents-in-law, we live with us for the past 25 years as well. And my mother-in-law, she's now 86, and still live with us at home. Before you eat, you offer your meal to the elder first before you start your meal. So some respect is important. And, um, you know, it's, it's important to teach your kid the way that you should be treated when you get old later. And my grandparents, you know, we live with them until the day they pass away in Vietnam as well. And I would like to see that culture um, continue here in, in, in Western society. But unfortunately, um, few things have changed because people um, busy working full time. But you find that in every Vietnamese family in the Illawarra or Sydney, as much as they can, they try to keep their parents at home. You know, when you see an elder or, or, or someone older than you, you have to bow your head and say hello and you address them according to their age. You don't call them by their name. If they are my friend, then my son has to call them uncle or auntie. Mm -hmm. You don't call them like David or Jason. You call them by their rank, the level. Especially teacher, teacher and, and people who teach at school, they get more highly respected as well. Yeah, they will be the same rank as your parents. Well, the greatest lesson I learned is um, respect. Respect. You don't talk back to them for anything that they say to you, even though you know that they, they could be wrong, but you don't talk back to them. You listen and then you, you, know, you nicely say something, but you don't always talk back. You, you, you respect them because they, they're the one who love you, who brought you to life. That's one thing I learned, respect. And to have grandparents or parents living with you in the same house, it's important because no one loves your child more than your parents and grandparents. So you have that kind of support as well, pass it on, the culture and, and, and how you do with each other, so the child can learn from that as well. I know that my son, he loves his grandparents a lot because the way that we teach him and we tell him how it's important to respect your grandparents and parents. If you find a family who have grandparents and parents living like three generations in the same house, the kids tend to be more uh, compassionate, more tolerant and more respectful than some children who only live with the parent but not without a grandparent. Yeah, because they learn more. A long thing My full name is uh, Fatih Jihan Jingas. I'm the secretary of the Islamic side of Illawarra. So there are nursing homes in Turkey as, as well, um, but not like how it is here, you know, like there's a lot more nursing facilities here, uh, aged care facilities. My mum actually works at an aged care facility here, so uh, I've heard a few stories from her about uh, you know, what happens in there and families coming and going. But yeah, in Turkey mainly when they get older, you know, they mainly stay at home, but it might get to a stage where they can't sort of look after themselves and you know, if, if their kids are working, then it's really hard, you know, because they can't be there all the time. Only then will they sort of take them to a uh, nursing home. In Australia, there are families that you know come and meet their you know parents very regularly. But then there are a lot of families that that don't. They're sort of just like you know once a year Christmas time or you know twice a year the grandchildren might come, and a lot of the grandparents sort of you know they feel like lonely. You know they they, they sort of you know they're just stuck in a room and they've got their friends there, but you know at the end of the day they want to see their families. 
yeah, so in Turkey, I've noticed people sort of respect their elders a bit more. Uh, or not just their own parents, but even older people in, in general. And I, I, I don't know why it is like in Australia where there's like extra burdens on us. Whereas like, for example, here, right, when you get a job, right, you need to go in mortgage. That's stress from day one. So whether that contributes to not having enough time to spend for, for elders or not. Also in, in the Quran it says, uh, well God says, we will reverse, for those who we give a long life, we will reverse their life. Which means when you're a baby, you're totally dependent on other people. Then as you get, you know, you get older, you're, you know, you're strong, you're, you're independent, you can do what you want. And then as you get older and older, it goes back to the beginning. Then you start being dependent on, on, on your kids. You can't do certain things and you even act like a child at a certain stage. But we were like that once when we were kids, you know, we were stubborn, we were childish. So we just have to remember that and just return the favour and just be patient. My name's Ronald Cruz and I coordinate the Eagle Award Action And I'm Richard Davis and I'm a, an Aboriginal business advisor. Because Aboriginal, um, they don't live too very old. I mean, it, old is a bit 70, 76, and then that, you know that's their lifespan. They have shorter lifespan than they're not Aboriginal right. people, so yeah, we keep them home. So if you don't respect, don't respect your elders. The elders and the knowledge that they have then you're losing who you are as a person because they're the ones that tell you who, where you've come from, who your family is, mm. you know, the knowledge about traditional stuff, the knowledge about when you were growing up or learning your, you know, the, the ways and lives of Aboriginal people in the, in the past. So, and, and it's a big family connection. If you don't have that family connection, then as you can see, we keep talking about it all the time. People lose their identity and they don't know who they are. So it's about having a family in there and having your elders and respecting, you know, what they've got to say. Because they're the ones that have, you know, shown you you are, where you come from and, you know, the knowledge of growing up. But yeah, we do respect our elders and, you know, from who they are. Because a lot of our elders have had a lot of hard on what I've had. My greatest lesson was that we we grew up on living on the land. I grew up living on beaches and river banks and, and always living on, on the edge of town because we, we we as children we didn't want to go to town because there was too much racism there. And because we travelled from Bundaberg in Queensland down the down the east coast across to you know the Murray River over to, to um, South Australia. And we and we do that every year, just following the seasonal seasonal work. And we didn't we didn't finally move into our first house when I was about um, 17 before we moved into a house. Because we just wanted to live on the riverbanks. But then government come along. I remember I was 14 and we was living on the on the beaches there at um, Mystery Bay. And when I was about 14, and when when um, white men had come around, we'd run and hide because we'd fear that it was the Aboriginal Protection Board to take come to take us. And I was laying in the tent and I was just watching this man talking to my dad, you know, and, he, and, he's, and, and then when he left I could see the look on my dad's face, you know, it was, what am I going to do, what am I, you know, what am I going to do with my family because they told him if he don't go, we'll take the kids away. So we ended up moving down, down to Wallaga Lake, which is a little bit down near Tilba Tilba. We, we lived on Wallaga Lake under, under a mission manager rule, you know, and that's horrible. He'd walk into your house, check your covers, check your beds, you know, and if you, you know, check that your house was clean, because if it wasn't, that was, you know, was neglecting the children, they take the children away. But that just taught us, you know, that just taught us to, well, just respect your elders and respect what you got.